I don't believe that humans are designed by nature to be vegans or vegetarian. <laughs> you know, I just don't. In fact, if you want to be a vegan, God bless you. But you have to study. You know, people that start eating vegan diets and don't, don't know about it. Yeah. Can, yeah. Well, the, first, the first six months are fantastic. It's the honeymoon. It's the vegan honeymoon. They, they look <laughs> great. And then they, they everything starts going south because they don't absorb enough B vitamins and minerals. You know, you have to have a PhD to be a, a healthy vegan. Hey, this is Chad Namiro. And I'm Kelly Namiro. Welcome to the Balancing Chaos Podcast. A lifestyle podcast where we will interview guests about wellness, business, and just about everything in between. Our goal is to help you develop a lifestyle that promotes health, wholeness, and success. Through our conversations, we hope to inspire you to live a beautiful, full, and joyful life as you navigate balancing the chaos. We hope you enjoy. Today's guest is a pioneer in the world of functional medicine, and we are honored to have him on the show. Dr. Alejandro Younger has taught people around the world the importance of detoxification, but he actually started his career as a traditional cardiologist and his own health crisis inspired him to begin a journey exploring holistic healing and ancient systems that support that methodology. He now has developed a few different detoxification programs, including the clean program, which I have done personally. And what I love about him is that he's constantly evolving and learning which isn't always the case with Western medicine doctors. So he's the author of multiple books, of which my favorite is Clean 7, which combines principles of functional medicine and Ayurveda into a reset, which is an amazing way to kind of like get your foot in the door with all of this detoxification stuff. So without further ado, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for being here. So I've done your program before, like I said, and it was back when I was really dealing with like a lot of chronic gut issues. I was dealing with thyroid stuff. And it's not just amazing for what it does for your body, but kind of how you feel so much mental clarity in your mind. Learning about that function of detoxification, I think is a really important why for people to like kind of get started in this. So let's break it down really, you know, to the basics for our listeners. What is functional medicine? What is the role of detoxification? And why is that so important for our bodies based on this, you know, the era that we're living in right now? You know, everything is connected. There's nothing, there's nothing that's separated from, from anything else. Yeah. So, so the, the detoxification system is is just one of the systems of the body. And we talk about it in that way, but it's not that that it's separate from anything else. No? The yeah. body is a whole. And in order to think about it and understand it, we make distinctions and we put names to things and we separate it in 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 systems right but it's a whole thing that's working all together right but it is useful to to make this distinction so we can talk about these things right right so in functional medicine is is a reorganization of traditional medicine in a way it's more focused on looking for the root cause of the problem as opposed to just healing the symptoms like a regular medicine does. Right. If you go to a regular med- medicine doctor and you tell him you have an ulcer, he will give you an antacid. You know, if you go and you have a headache, he he, he will give you an analgesic. If you if you have a, a Diarrhea, he he will give you a pill to stop the diarrhea. And if you have fever, he will give you a a, a pill to bring down the fever. If you have high blood pressure, he will give you a pill to bring down your blood pressure. If you have high cholesterol, they'll give you a pill to bring down the (laughs) cholesterol. And we can go on and on and on. And and, And if there's an organ that's acting weird, they'll probably cut it off, right? Right. So... So functional medicine is way more interested or is only interested in why is it that you have this problem? Mm. Why is it that you have a headache? Why is it that you have uh, um, high blood pressure or, or, or diabetes? Or, so, so it's trying to find the root cause of the problem. Mm-hmm. In order to do that, functional medicine 
thinks of the body as a conjunction of systems. Okay. And there's there's a communication system, which is the hormonal and the nervous system. The hormones, they spit out some fluids, the ho yeah. ho hormones, mm -hmm. and, and, um, and they communicate things, right? Mm -hmm. The nerve, they send out electrical impulses, and they communicate different parts of the body with each other, right? One of them is faster, and the other one is a little slower, right? But that's the communication system. Then there's a structural system. The cells have a membrane that keeps them in their shape. Your body has bones and cartilages and skin, right? There's a structural system. Mm -hmm. Then, then there is a digestive and assimilation system. What does that mean? You need to introduce things from the outside into your into the inside. You mean to, you, you need to transform the outside world into yourself mm -hmm. because you are made of stuff from the outside, but you cannot just inject it in your veins. Right. It has to go through a process. When you eat the outside world, you break it down into their minimum components. And then those minimum components are absorbed through the digestive system into the blood. And then they reassemble. It's like Lego pieces, you know, <laughs> you see, you see, it, let's say you, you see a chicken made of Lego, right? You, you grab that, that Lego chicken, you break it down and you, and, and once you're done breaking it down, you don't know which, which, if it's a, if it's a chicken or not, you just have pieces, right? Mm -hmm. And then with those pieces, you start putting them together, and you can you can make some, some you can make a car, you can make something else, right. or you can make a human being, right? So the the pieces are the simple carbohydrates, the simple uh, uh, peptides, proteins, mm -hmm. and the fats. Mm -hmm. And those pieces, then you absorb them, and you put them together, and you make yourself, right? right? That's a digestive and assimilation system. Now, one of the systems of the body is the detoxification system. Mm -hmm. And what does the detoxification system do is get rid of anything that is generated inside the body that is toxic or that comes from the outside and is toxic already, right? Because life itself is an acid toxin forming process. Yeah. Yeah. You you go for you go for a run, you burn sugar and you and you create lactic acid. Mm -hmm. You eat something and and it's digested and broken down and then you have waste products. You know, homocysteine, uric acid, things that the body has to break down. Even the simplest of the processes in the body, uh, in the body, which is the breathing process, generates a toxin. You know, you you take in oxygen, it goes into your blood, it goes into the cell, it goes into the mitochondria, it enters what's called the Krebs cycle, mm -hmm. and it it's joined by glucose and it's ignited and burned. It extracts the energy out of the glucose. And at the end, you are left with CO2, mm -hmm. carbon dioxide, and water. Right. And that to, the carbon dioxide has to be eliminated. The CO2 has to be eliminated. So it gets dissolved in the blood as carbonic acid. Then it goes through the lung. When it goes through the lungs, the lungs, you know, get it. As it were, I mean, it, it's it's a it's a transfer of uh, it has to do with a, a partial pressures and things, right, and concentrations. But it, and then you breathe it out, out. Mm -hmm. right? So that's the most basic detoxification function that we have. That if it stops for one minute or a couple of minutes, you die right. because your your CO two level, you know, all your cells are producing CO two. Your CO two level, CO two levels will would uh, would rise so high, you, you would die. So you have to breathe it out constantly. Right. Right. So, right. so what's the, the same? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. And in, in, in the same way, 
all the other waste products of your metabolism have to be detoxified and eliminated. And the body does that in many ways. The liver participates, the intestines participate, the skin participates, the lymphatic system participates. And it's a very complex and organized way in which toxins that are created inside the body as waste products of your metabolism or toxins that are put from the outside are converted into non-toxic and they are allowed to be eliminated right right so so th that is the basic function of detoxification okay. now what hap what happened why now are we talking about detoxification yeah because nature designed things in a way in which the majority of the toxins that your body should be fighting to detoxify yeah. should be the ones that are generated inside your body. Right. But That's why today, we have a liver, right? Like that, that was what I was going to ask you is I think that like, there's a lot of people out there who would be like, Oh, well, you know, a Western medicine doctor would say, well, there's no lead, need for assisted detoxification because that's what your liver is for. And so I want to kind of hear what your response to that would be. The, the problem today is that there are so many toxins coming from outside. Right. Right. The air that we breathe, the water we drink and shower with, the medications we consume, mm. the cosmetics we apply on our skins, the, 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 the materials with which we build these boxes that we live in. But mostly the food-like products that we eat are loaded with chemicals. Mm -hmm. that it, that alone or in combination end up being toxic toxic to the body. So now the detoxification system, which nature designed just to detoxify the, the waste products of your metabolism and, and a few other toxins outside, have to detoxify all these other toxins. Mm -hmm. But, and, and the liver is capable, uh, luckily the liver is capable of doing it. But the problem is, that the liver has to form enzymes in order to do it. Right. And and, and not, not only the liver, all around the body, right? But mainly the liver. And the, and the enzymes are, are manufactured with nutrients that should be coming from foods. Yeah. And we are not eating nutrient-dense foods. So now the liver... There is a high of toxins. Mm -hmm. There is a low of creating enzymes because we don't have the, the nutrients that are needed. Mm -hmm. And and then there's a, there's one more problem, which is an energetic problem, which is the body can only do so many things at the same time. Yeah. And the body is not designed to be digesting all the time. Mm -hmm. So because modern human beings are digesting all the time because we are eating all day long then we are digesting all day long. The body's expending its energy in digesting. It has to take energy out of other processes. Mm. One of the processes that suffers the most with modern life, because it has no energy available, because it has no nutrients available, and because it has a high of toxins that never it has never seen before, nature has never seen before, with this is man, man created, that is why we are in this conundrum and that is why i pay so much attention to the detoxification system i think that that's that's super helpful for for people to, that's super helpful for people to understand right because um you know i think that we we just think of like oh we're we're moving through our life and it, we sh but we don't recognize all of these toxins that we can't necessarily see and so what should people be like looking out for in terms of whether it's what they're putting on their face or should they make be making sure that they should are like eating organically like are there any things that you would say that just are like easy wins for people to say okay you know i don't i'm not going to use things with parabens or i'm going to look at these ingredients like is where's the place to start the problem today is that there is an overload of information yeah and it 
and it paralyzes people because in, even even you asking the question, you don't know where to go. The, you know, organic foods, the parabens. Well, you know, you don't know what to talk about first, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's so much information. So I tell everybody, easy. Yeah. It's a learning. It's a learning curve. <sighs> And, and here is where you start. You start by eating real food mm. and not food-like products. That is the one most important thing that you can do, right? So, so simple, to... but so hard for so many people. Yeah, there's so much information around that. What, what would you dictate as a well-balanced, nutritious so, diet? So, 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 so in, in this is in steps, right? Because yeah. the first thing to realize is that we are animals created by nature, and nature created the foods that we should be eating yes. in the form of nature. So our foods must be nature, natural. Mm -hmm. So what do we what should we be eating? We should be eating other animals. We should be eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, everything that comes from the earth, from the you know, from the from the rivers, from the oceans, right? Yeah. We should not be eating what we are eating today because if you go to mo modern supermarket today, which is where most humans buy most of what they eat, 90% of what is sold there comes in a box, in a jar, in a tube, in a can, in a, you know, in a, in, 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 in a bag. Yeah. And, and those are not foods. Those are food like or edible products. Yeah. Ultra processed shit. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you eat that, that is where you are at the pinnacle of disaster. Mm -hmm. So first you start by eating real foods and not food like products. Okay. Then you go a, f a step further. You go into, yes, I'll, I'll do real foods, but I'll do the foods that also have no chemicals. Because even to, we, we are so screwed up, human beings, <laughs> that even real foods we, 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 have, we have tarnished with, like, for example, we, we give a, a hormones and antibiotics to our cows and chickens so that we yeah. can make them grow faster and, and bigger and make more money. And then we put, we put all kinds of chemicals in our plants to, to, to kill the bugs. And th so fertilizers and pesticides and insecticides and glyphosate. And, and so, so the next step when, when you, when you're thinking about these things, okay, so I'm going to eat real foods. Now off the real foods, I'm going to eat the ones as much as I can, as as much as I can afford, and 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 as all this information is is percolating through the world, there's more and more available options, right? Yeah. So it's it's becoming it's becoming more available to eat organic, meaning the least chemicals or no chemicals into into what you eat, right? Yep. And 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 there's even one step further, which is no genetically modified organisms right mm. eat eat the things that your great 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 grandmother would have found available yeah. not all this, not all this stuff that is you know created in laboratories that looks that looks natural because it's a fruit you know for example wheat right why, why, why everybody makes fun? I know the talk show hosts make fun of, of gluten sensitivities and stuff, but it's a true problem. Why? Because gluten is not the same as the gluten that your great great grandmother was eating. Right. There wasn't a, there wasn't a problem with, of gluten before, but before, but because of genetically modified organisms and and glyphosate. Gluten has become a different organism, a different plant, and so it's, it's now damp. And is it's it now inflammatory damp to the body now. Well, it's not only inflammatory. Yes, it's, it is inflammatory, mm -hmm. but 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 the damage that it causes, well, you know what? In the end, definitely engages the the immune and repair mechanism mm -hmm. of part of which. Uh, uh, one of one of of the processes of the immune and repair mechanisms of the body is inflammation. Mm -hmm. So so yes, inflammation is involved. 
mm-hmm. in, you know, it ends up turning on the processes of inflammation. Right. Yeah. So the least processed, the better. And honestly, it's it's sticking to the perimeter of the oh, grocery, the grocery store. store. It's like, don't go in the middle. Stick to the perimeter where the vegetables are. Don't go, in the, don't, don't, are. Don't, go in the don't go in the supermarkets. Just go to the farmer's Farmer's market, market yeah. yeah. I remember a time in my life when springtime would hit and immediately... I would be searching for a new trainer or Googling all of the seven day juice cleanse, 14 day detoxes so that I could get myself in shape for summer. And what I didn't realize at this time was that all of that was a complete waste of my time, of my energy, of my resources. And I look back on that, just wishing for those hours and all of that energy and brain power back. The decisions that I was making for my body were coming from a place of punishment rather than from a place of love. And it wasn't until I started meditating and I started doing the work, the real work on myself that I recognized that I needed to nourish my body with both movement and food and mindset work if I ever wanted my body to love me back in a sustainable way. And that's why the WBK membership that I release meditations where I deeply connect you with yourself and blood sugar balancing recipes to nourish you on a cellular level and low impact movement to support the delicate balance of your hormones really gets you the results that you're looking for where it starts to become a lifestyle. It starts to become who you are. I can tell you firsthand that both myself and my members, my private clients, all of us have seen the most incredible results from the WBK method. It's so different than your typical diet and a restrictive approach that we're taught from diet culture from a very early age. As a 33 year old mom of two, this is the leanest I've ever been, the most energy that I've ever had and the best that I have ever felt in my freaking body. And it can be that way for you too. So right now with the code balancing chaos, all one word, B-A-L-A-N-C-I-N-G-C-H-A-O-S, you can get 10% off your annual membership for the WBK method and get new weekly content, plus a library of hundreds of workouts, recipes, meditations with a seven day reset and a 30 day challenge all to get you started. So use the code balancing chaos, again, all one word to start your seven day free trial and see when you love your body back, how your body starts to love you. I want to ask one question about his diet specifically, because yeah. you're such, you know, this is like your life's work. Are you eating meat at every meal or are you more plant focused? Yeah, what's the balance of fats, carbohydrates, proteins? I, I don't believe that humans are designed by nature to be vegans or vegetarian. <laughs> you know, I just don't. In fact, if you want to be a vegan, God bless you, but you have to study. You know, people that start eating vegan diets and don't, don't know about it. Yeah. Can, yeah. For the, first, the first six months are fantastic. It's the honeymoon. It's the vegan honeymoon. They, they look <laughs> great. And then they, they everything starts going south because they don't absorb enough B vitamins and minerals. You know, you have to have a PhD to be a, a healthy vegan. I was so vegan I for don't... like four years, four, four years. And when I wanted to get pregnant the second time, like I ended up adding fish and like some animal protein back into my diet because I found that you're exactly right. It, like it does deplete the body of nutrients. And my body was just craving protein. So- I, I agree with that statement. It's, I not, only, it's, I, not, only, it's not only protein. It's protein. It's iron. Yeah. It's B vitamins. It's it's a no it's a, a lot of food. Yeah. Right. I didn't have a, a honeymoon. But I went straight to divorce. Uh, the first two months of being vegan for me were. Did were you did terrible. you have a problem getting pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I just felt really tired, and it I got incredibly skinny, tired. and um you know, the recovery periods post-workout were double the amount of time and my body just didn't feel very good whatsoever. But I yeah. think it's and just- listen, yeah. And listen, God bless vegans. Yeah. I, I admire I admire them. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I envy them when they when they are really healthy. Yeah. Because right. I envy them because they because they know more than me. Because they I want to pick their brains because they know so much 
that they know how to incorporate everything that's but i think that nature designed humans to eat other animals yeah so i eat so. meat i eat meat proudly and and yeah. delicious i love it you know? do you eat animal byproducts like like cheese and things of that nature or is that because that's processed, processed? So probably not i don't I, I don't eat dairy products okay or, can you talk about that in your book wait wait, wait 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 let's put it this way <laughs> let's put it this way when i eat dairy products I know I'm going to pay the consequences. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not going to say I don't because I'm I'll be lying to you because I'm, I'm human and I have my vices and I have my, my, you know, yeah. even though I know, even though I know a lot of things, I do a lot of things against what I know mm-hmm. because that's the nature of humans. You know, we, we, we are, we are a little crazy. <laughs> and I like, you know, I, sometimes I like to eat an ice cream. So I'm here in Argentina. One of the one of the typical plates here in Argentina is called provoleta. Mm-hmm. It's provolone cheese that they put in the in the in the fire and they kind of burn it, and it comes really crunchy. And, and, and I mean, I kill for it. But the <laughs> next day, the next day, I wake up and I'm stuffy and I'm inflamed, yeah. and I know I'm going to pay the price. Yeah. So what's a typical, before we kind of get into like some of the symptoms of poor detoxification, because I definitely want people and listeners to know, like, if they are not detoxifying properly, like what that looks like for them. But before we do that, what's just like a typical day of eating like for you? If you are eating, you know, relatively clean, you're not indulging, like, what does that look like? So that's what I'm doing now in Argentina, because Argentina has amazing, amazing food, right? I don't have a typical day. Okay. There is no there is no typical day for me. Usually, but 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 to you know, we need to talk about something, right? So <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you what happened yesterday and today. Yeah. Right. Yesterday, I only had one meal a day. Yesterday. Okay. Which was dinner. Which was dinner, and and a friend of mine took me to this really cool restaurant. It looked like an illegal place, you know. You had to ring a bell, and they come and pick you, up and pick you, and take you there. There were very little people, few people, but and they served this uh, carpaccio meat, like raw meat, mm-hmm. with portobello mushrooms, and then and then the second plate that was the, the entree, and then the second plate was fish, simple, made in the, in the fire. Um, and um, real fire mm. and with olive oil, which is very, very simple, but incredible. Today, I think it's three or four o'clock in the afternoon here. I haven't even drank water yet. Oh, all right. And now and now I'm going to go have my first meal as soon as I hang up with you. Yeah. And I'm going to go have a fish okay. with a salad. So that's part of like the fasting mentality yeah. that you have, right? I don't even, I don't even, by now, I don't even call it fasting. Yeah. It's, it's my life. I eat when I'm hungry. There you go. And I had to, and I had to discover what it means to be hungry mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. what I used to call, and I still sometimes call I'm hungry, is just, I want to eat. I, you know, I have the desire to eat. I'm craving, I'm craving something, right? Right. Most people don't know, not most people, but most people that are listening to your podcast don't know what being hungry actually really is. Yeah. Right. Right. What they feel that that sensation they feel that they name hungry is just a, a desire to eat. And it's created by chemical uh, imbalances, you know, mm-hmm. or right. hormonal imbalance. So, so I had to discover for myself what it is to be hungry. And so now when I can, I try to go to that basic instinct and I eat when you're hungry and, and when I'm hungry. And sometimes it's a couple of times a day. Sometimes it's three times a day, very few. Sometimes it's one time a day. Mm-hmm. Now people call that intermittent fasting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I know that that like you talk about that in your books a little bit. And so with that said, do you feel like 
the time, you know, like you said, you're, you kind of eat when you're hungry, but if somebody was doing one of your programs and they were doing intermittent fasting, is that a way to help improve the detoxification process? Absolutely, because you are resting your your digestive system, which mm-hmm. is one of the ways in which the body the body is stolen from the energy that is needed for the detoxification system. Yeah. So that and that's the main the main way in which the detoxification system is assisted by intermittent fasting. Okay, one thing that like a lot of um, people who come to see me think about, and that that I you know, always wonder about what the idea behind intermittent fasting and you talk about hormones is like, does that impact blood sugar at all? And does that like create like more pressure on the adrenals? And what what are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, of course it affects blood sugar, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But but the problem is that, that we need to... You know, everybody now understands that your body needs to be flexible and right. yoga is at an all time high in, in popularity, right? So we need also a flexible metabolism. When you have like, like a stagnant, stiff metabolism, you have to eat at a certain time, otherwise your sugar goes down and if your sugar goes down, you're cranky. You know? all, that, all that is stiff rigid living you have to start flexing your metabolism and 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 metabolic metabolic flexibility is what you achieve by intermittent fasting and and yes your blood sugar goes down and then maybe you do get cranky at the beginning but you learn how to cope with it and then the your and then your body will will not have sugar to use Mm -hmm. and then we'll have to burn fat and then you will you will enter into a ketogenic state mm-hmm. in which your body creates a kind of sugar, the ketone bodies, from fat. Right. So you're not only going to lose fat, and, you know, but also now we know that ketogenic states, you know, the keto diets are 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 in full uh, in, yeah. in full fashion right, right now. Right? <laughs> Why? Why? Because. That means that you are creating a certain metabolic flexibility mm-hmm. and you are burning fat and you are not only burning fat, w- you know, something happens when you don't provide your body constantly with stuff, then then your body has to find some stuff inside of yourself. So it starts eating itself. It's called autophagia. You start eating yourself and the body is so smart. It starts by eating your diseased and your, and your, and your zombie cells and your, and your senescent cells, the cells that are getting old and that are getting sick, then your body will, will eat them up. Right. So, so that's another benefit of, and in all the, all of this goes together. We talk about it differently. We talk about intermittent fasting. We talk about keto diet as as if oh, these are different subjects, you know, different uh, like you know, like you talk about fashion, right? But but all these things are tied up. Mm-hmm. All these things are happening con- concomitant concomitantly in a in a in a continuous uh, mm-hmm. wave of reactions of the body, you know. Mm. So for keto, one of the uh, dissenting opinions is just usually around the sheer amount of protein intake that, you know, uh, introducing that much protein into your body can be really straining on the organs. And so is yeah, that, no, 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 no. I, whoever told you that <laughs> if, or wherever you read that, you need to, you need a different source of information. There's no problem with, with, with eating protein as, as long as you're hydrated, as long as you're, you know, you cannot isolate one subject, yeah. right? Keto, ketogenic diets are not as much the fact that you're eating protein as the fact that you are not eating simple carbohydrates. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, so talk to us a little bit about the idea of like, if somebody isn't detoxifying properly, and I, I want to take it back to like what I had said about myself at the 
beginning of the episode, like I had horrible digestive issues. My thyroid and my hormones were really out of whack for, for a long time in my twenties. Like I feel like a lot of that had to do with detoxification, um, or at least to some degree, there was an issue there. Tell us what are the symptoms that somebody who isn't detoxifying properly, what would they feel? Any and every symptom that you can imagine, any and every disease that you can imagine can be started okay. or exacerbated by poor detoxification. Okay. Going from, from unhealthy looking skin, tiredness, mental fog, infertility, cancer, diabetes, or obesity, whatever, just name anything, name yeah. a symptom. <laughs> and I can, and I can, and I can walk you down the path and, 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 and get you 10 years before or five years before and act and show you how it started with a poor detoxification process. Right. And, and there's one more thing. It's not just the detoxification system that is suffering these days. Mm -hmm. It's, your intestines that are suffering too. Talk and about that. The gut health, the, connect, the gut health connection. Yeah, and so so the different systems in the body share organs, right? For example, the intestines are part of the detoxification system, but they are also part of the nervous system and communication system. They are also part of the immune and and repair system because. 80% of your immune system is within and around your intestines. Mm. Uh, there's a bigger brain within and around your intestines than your skull. Um, the, you know, so the, 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 the intestines are shared by different systems. And when the intestines start getting damaged, many systems start failing. Mm. So the detoxification system suffers, the immune system suffers, the nervous system suffers. So, so, you know, Hippocrates said it more than 2000 years ago, health and disease start in the intestine. And it's more relevant now than ever, right? right? The way we are living is destroying our intestines and the intestines are, is the intestines is an organ or, 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 uh, a conjunction of organs that participate in every system in your body. There's no system that, that, that doesn't at some point involve the intestines. So any disease, chronic disease that you can name, mm -hmm. I can show you how it could have started with, in, with intestinal damage sometime before. Right. And, and I distinguish four components of the intestines. Okay. One of them is the intestinal flora, mm. right? Microbes. That, that it microbes, which is not only bacteria, it's bacteria, fungus, viruses. There's all kinds of microbes there, even parasites, some of which are good. Um, then, there is, then there is the intestinal wall that separates the outside of your body from the inside of your body, just like your skin. Mm -hmm. Your skin does it in the outside and your, your intestinal wall does it in the inside, right? And when that gets broken, it leads to leaky gut or mm -hmm. hyperpermeability, which is the, 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 the uh, beginning of all the chronic diseases of the modern world. And then, and then you have within and around the intestines, you have the enteric nervous system mm -hmm. and the enteric immune system, right? So there's four components to the gut, to right. the intestine. Yeah, I and think that are... that's a big problem that so many people start to deal with, like, you know, whether it's their like 20s, 30s. And um, because one, you're eating so much processed food, like you talked about at the beginning Two, like, I know for me, I was on hormonal birth control for like 10 years. And so I, I know for me that had a huge role to play in it. And then using all those toxic products, you don't think that that's going to impact your gut health, but it's like, so, so the thing is, so, so the thing is when one system goes array, mm -hmm. then, then other systems 
start trying to compensate. So other systems go out, go out of work. Yep. So everything is connected. And when you correct the root cause, yeah. then everything, fall, everything falls into place. 100%. Maybe we'll give them a real life example because I'm dealing with some gut issues. Yeah. I'll try to break it yeah, down. Yeah, go ahead. Little. Say that. I think actually for the last three plus years, uh, usually whenever I eat, but specifically it seems to be carbs, I get really bloated and oftentimes gassy. It's kind of gross, <laughs> but it's true. And so- Thank God, about, thank God you're still married. Yeah, yeah, right. right. I walk away. <laughs> But it actually gotten a lot worse. And I think one of the times was stomach flu. Uh, a, a multiple people in our group got stomach flu. And so that probably was something different. But she had me do a stool I test. A stool test. I don't know how big of a fan you are of those. But like we found out that he has like yeast overgrowth in his gut. Yeah. And so um, I want to. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what your thoughts are on that. So just yeah, generally. Any, any, any imbalance of the inner environment is Something going to off. is going to explode in some way you know if you go to the forest and you and you change the temperature maybe the mosquitoes are going to if thrive but there's not, there's not going to be enough frogs to eat them and then it's going to be infected with mosquitoes and then it's going to be un, uninhabitable for other species right yeah. so there's there, there's an imbalance there right so, so in your case, there's an imbalance of 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 some bug that makes gas, methane, and and, and butane, you know, and and so you feed the things that you shouldn't be feeding it, and and so the wrong bugs eat them, and and their waste products is gas, and then then you fart like like a maniac. So, so it's probably so sure on carbs, right? Which is what candida yeah. feeds off of. So what you need what you need to do is you need to do a gut repair program. But get my book Clean Guts and follow the program in there. There we go. And I and I, and I have time for I have time for one more question. All right. So I think that we should do it where you tell us a little bit about, cause we have so much, um, so many questions, but I think that we should talk about, um, your, like your programs and like which one you would recommend for people to start with. Because I think that there's like, you have, you know, clean seven and then you have the 21 day program. So tell us where people should start. So my first book was clean and it's, it's about detoxification, the detox, detoxification system. And there's a program for, for, for enhancing your detoxification system. That's a great place to start. Okay. But sometimes it's not enough because the gut is already taken a hit. So you need a little bit more attention in giving the body the conditions to repair that gut. Mm -hmm. And then you, that, that person goes, uh, should go into the gut, clean gut book in program. Right. Okay. And then, and then honestly, I believe that 21 days is the minimum that you can do to really get profound effects. What I saw in life is that people are, are busy and they don't want you know, they, they get scared when they hear 21 days. Yeah. So then I, I spent 10 years trying to figure out how do I give people a shorter experience, but a good one, enough, good enough to keep them to get them hooked. Right. So that's when I that's when I combine functional medicine, intermittent fasting, and Ayurvedic medicine in, in the Clean Seven program. And in seven days, I give you a good taste of yep. detoxification and gut repair that hopefully will get you hooked and you continue on. Yeah. But if you don't only do the seven days. You're gonna you're gonna feel something. Yeah. But my hope is that you continue and really get to you know to the root of the problem. Yes, a hundred percent. I know. I like I said, I experienced some really good results when I did your program a few years ago, and I recommend it to to so many people. And and you like do supplements and all of these different things. So I feel like we could have you back and talk even more for like a part two if you're ever open to it because sure, this has been sure. fascinating. Let's, let's do that. Okay. We would love right. it. Thank you so much. Right. We know you're a busy well, man. Tell I'm going to do your, your program. And so next time we talk. He'll have an update for yeah. you. Update. Do, the clean, do the, the clean gut repair program. And we yeah. ask, we also at Clean, my company, we have gut repair programs in groups 
which yeah. are sometimes for some people, for a lot of people, even better because you yeah. keep you, you keep each other accountable, you inspire yeah. each other. You know, when when you go on a, on a, on, a, on a group run, it's yeah, always of course. not always, but many times better than going on a solo run. You know, yes. yeah. And that and, and it's the same with this kind of thing. So you can join, which is coming up soon, our gut repair program at Clean. He, he does better dot- with accountability. So we're we're forcing him into the group. I like that idea. Go to yeah. go to cleanprogram.com and check out when our next group gut repair program is. Okay. We'll we'll do okay. that for sure. Tell our listeners um where they can find you on Instagram. I you're like Dr. Said, you're- Dr. Alejandro Junger on Instagram. My books are clean, clean gut, clean eats, clean seven. I'm Perfect. on Facebook, I'm on Twitter. Cleanprogram.com is is the company that I created so that I could provide people that I don't have time to go to the supermarket and buy all or or the health food store or 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 the the you know the organic food markets or yeah. farmers market people that don't have time to do that they don't have an excuse we provide a kit that you can do a shake in the morning a shake at night then have a list of foods for lunch that you eat and you cannot eat and a bunch of supplements that will set your detoxification system on fire. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Younger, for being with us. We're so grateful. And we will definitely try to get you your team so we can schedule part two because this was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good night. It was really nice. It was really nice to meet you guys. And thank you for having me. You You as well. Thank you. We really hope that you enjoyed that episode. You can follow me on Instagram at Wellness by Kelly. And if you're new around here, you can sign up for the WBK seven day free trial where you can get access to all of my low impact workouts, blood sugar balancing, plant based recipes, and guided meditations, all available on wellnessbykelly.com and on the WBK app. Hey, thanks for listening. Please make sure you rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. You can also connect with us on social media at Wellness by Kelly. Drop us a DM for who you want to hear from. 